Hi there, uh, this video is the final one on ratio analysis and what we're doing is we're going to have a look at evaluating ratio analysis. So we're judging the extent to which ratio analysis is a useful tool for judging the performance of a business. Okay, just before we get on to that, just um, a reminder really, with each of these ratios you need to be able to do three things. One, you need to calculate each of them and uh, you need to know the formula for calculating it, where those figures are going to be on the income statement and balance sheet. You're unlikely to get a full income statement and balance sheet in an exam. What you're going to get is you're going to get little segments. But you might see, uh, for example, um, the they've given you the inventories and they've given you the cost of sales. Right? They might not tell you to calculate um, inventory turnover but because you know the formula you're going to know that you can calculate that and use it in an exam uh, answer um, you know if they're talking about how effectively they manage stock you know so um, you need to, to, to be quite savvy with what the examiner is going to be asking you to do maybe implicitly and not explicitly so number one you need to be able to calculate them number two you need to be able to interpret these figures. So what does that mean for this company? Number three, you need to be able to make a recommendation or a judgment. Um, so for example, if we set, find out that um, there's an opportunity for a business to expand and they've got a relatively uh, low level of gearing, say 18%, um, you could recommend that that business um, borrows money to, to take um, advantage of uh, that opportunity. So um, three things, know how to calculate it, know how to interpret it, what it means, be prepared to make judgments and recommendations based on what you find. But uh, you need to be aware of what the strengths of ratio analysis are and what the limitations, what the weaknesses of ratio analysis are. So uh, ratios are more meaningful than uh, numbers without context. So what I mean by that is you know, let's just say, I, I tell you, oh, business X made £100,000 this year. Well, OK, um, but we don't know how much revenue business X made. If business X made, um, you know, 300000 in revenue, that's a 33% profit. If they made uh, £4 billion in uh, revenue, a um, profit of £100,000 isn't particularly good. They're not you know, so ratios provide um, a meaning um, when they're uh, a meaningful figure that we can look at and interpret and, and make judgments on performance with. Um, it allows us to make comparisons over time. So let's have a look at what happened in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. Let's see what the trend is here. Is the profitability uh, declining over time? Is it increasing? What's going on here? So we can judge a firm over time or we can judge them against their competitors um, and see, you know, well, it's all very well. You made a uh, return on capital employed at 12%, but your competitors are making 20%. Why are they so much better than you? Okay. Um, it helps to set targets. Okay. Very clear targets can be set, right? You're making 12% return on capital employed. You're, um, the, the uh, benchmark in the industry is 20%, right, next year we want you to make 15% and then 20% uh, return on capital employed the year after. So we can help, uh, we, we can set very clear targets um, using these ratios. Um, internal and external uh, stakeholders will find ratios useful in making decisions. So, you know, the how highly geared a business is um, might uh, influence whether or not a bank gives them a loan. The level of liquidity in a business might determine whether or not suppliers are prepared to offer credit. Um, return on capital employed uh, would encourage, a high return on capital employed might encourage me as a, sh as a potential shareholder to invest. So all sorts of stakeholders make decisions with them. And um, there's a huge number of ratios uh, that, you know, even I don't know. Uh, specific to different industries that um, uh, help specialists make decisions in those fields. So there's, you know, very, very helpful um, for specialists, technical people to uh, analyse business performance. What are the limitations of ratio analysis? Well, 
For starters, it only provides quantitative information. There's no qualitative data available. Uh, you know, motivation of the workforce, loyalty of customers, uh, the fact that uh, they've just appointed a brilliant new manager who's got loads of new ideas, um, a competitor about to enter the industry. None of those things are considered in ratio analysis. It's purely numerical performance in the past. Um, there can be difficulty valuing some assets. So, you know, on the balance sheet, particularly if we're being asked to value a business, you know, how do we um, value a, a brand image, for example? Um, accounts can be manipulated and not provide fair information. So, um, although the accounts of PLCs are audited, there are things that can be done by clever accountants to make things not quite as they make things look a little bit better than they are. It's called window dressing. And if the accounts aren't right, if the figures in the account aren't right, the ratio is not right. And that um, uh, that can be a problem when we're trying to analyse performance. We really need quality data. And if that data is being manipulated, we don't have it. Um, there's specialist knowledge needed to interpret accounts. There's a lot to remember for, for you guys in these relatively simple uh, ratios that you guys need to remember. But there's, you know, there's a lot there. I'm not, not saying that there isn't. Um, so a certain amount of specialist knowledge is needed to interpret accounts. If you just give the average person on the street the accounts of Tesco, the accounts of Marks and Spencer, and say, which one's doing better? Ooh, they're going to struggle to uh, to come to a conclusion there. Um, and... Um, Accounts are only based on past performance. It doesn't tell us anything about current or future prospects of the business. So um, when you are using a ratio or when uh, you um, make a judgment based on a ratio, you know, to put a bit of evaluation on it, you can say, well, you know, this data is provided by this person who may have window dressed the account or, uh, you know, you bring in other things that, that maybe mean that the ratio is either better than it looks or it, it's, it could be actually be worse than it looks. Um, all right, so these are really good points for you to remember and be able to use uh, in essays.